indeed the stars have aligned because we have with us here a Nigerian idol with us sitting in the studio. She's popularly known as Ivel. She's Zibili Evelyn, one who won the Nigerian Idol competition, the fourth edition in 2014. Now, recently she was nominated by the Africa Movie Academy Awards as well as Africa Movie Viewers' Choice Awards for her song, Kilimanjaro. And it was like best song in a movie, the movie tattoo. We have with us yeah. Evel. I am so excited. I am so I'm proud so of you. I'm so happy to have you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so much. That is huge. I think that we just even start huge. with the, the award nomination. The moment mm. you discover that you were, you were nominated for best soundtrack in a movie, in the movie tattoo, your song Kilimanjaro was nominated. Where were you at the time you found out, and how was your reaction? So, I was just watching, I was seeing a program on TV, and then I got a message, congratulations. I'm like, okay, congratulations for what? <laughs> you know, from my record label, they were like, congratulations, um, Kilimanjaro just got nominated. I was like, how? You know when you're not expecting something? Like, I'd dropped the song for the movie soundtrack, like, almost a year ago, mm. and then... I wasn't expecting, I, I didn't even remember my song for, was used for a movie sound, soundtrack. I didn't know at the time that AMVCA nomination uh, was on. So it came as a surprise. I felt like I could stand on my head. <laughs> it felt that though. good. I think I actually put it up online. I was like, yeah, I think I could stand on my head. It was so exciting. I wasn't expecting it at all. That is amazing. And a lot more Thank is going you. to come your way that you're not expecting because and you're a star, like Olive said, you honestly are. Your voice is so unique, it's so Thank dynamic, you. and I love your music. So you. take us through a journey. Let's get to know <laughs> Bell a bit. So what led you to start off with Nigerian Idol in 2014, or were you pursuing a career before you went to Nigeria Idol? Um, I was singing already, but it wasn't like I was pursuing a career. Yeah. I, I just loved to sing. I was singing, it was paying my bills at the time. But before Nigerian Idol, I wasn't thinking, should I start a career? I, I didn't even have a single recorded um, a song for myself. I was writing songs for other people, you know, backing up for a full album for people. But I didn't think, okay, I need to do a song for myself until Nigerian Idol came. And I was pushed to it, by the way. I, did, I, I wasn't ready to do it, you know. So someone forced me to go for the competition. And yeah, it turned out good. <laughs> And how's the journey for you being Nigerian Idol in 2014? How's it been for you? It's been good. There's been ups and downs, definitely. But I've been learning and finding my way through. And definitely, I haven't been... Good thing is, I haven't been stagnant. I've been um, moving. Has there been pressure? Usually, there's a pressure when one wins a reality show. You know, there's this pressure that comes with people's expectations of you. How Have you felt the pressure and have you been able to handle it? Initially, after Nigerian Idol, it was crazy. I felt like my life was not mine. Every day, people kind of reminded me that, come, we made you who you are, so we do whatever we want you to do. And that's how the first song, I'm Naughty, came about. I felt like I need, because of how I felt at the time, I felt like I needed to drop uh, an inspirational song, you know, song that everybody can relate with, because it was really how I felt at the time. But the pressure was really more, people were like, you need to give us a club banger. You know, we want to dance, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know what to do. The pressure was too much, and I didn't know how to control it at the time. So I went with the flow, and I regretted it. But over time, at some point, if you noticed, I disappeared for like two years or so. I had to go rethink, what do I really want to do? Do I really want to do this business on a, um, music business on the long run? So I had to detox on learn so I can learn, you know. And then I realized that if I want to do this, I have to do it the right way. So I started from the scratch and yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. That is amazing. <laughs> and it's so important for us to actually go through phases where we unlearn and learn again. And now you're here, it's 2018 and you're still pushing forward. Yeah. What would you say that you've now decided that you want for yourself? What are we going to see from Avel? Wow. Um... <laughs> My trip to the U.S. for the first time in January um, changed my mindset a lot. I, I performed at the Martin Luther King concert in January, and I realized that I'm not just a singer. I realized that there's, there's so much I can do in the entertainment world. I realized that I'm not just a singer, but I'm an actor, you know. And before now, I used to just write music for myself, mm. you know, like, okay, this is how I feel, this is what I want to write. But now... I could see someone just sitting down like Olive is right now and I have a full song, <laughs> you know? It's so crazy. So I know now that I want to go fully into music business. I know now that 
I can now negotiate with my record label and get the best <laughs> out Usually, of them. The gist with an artist and record label sometimes it's not always so pleasant. I know. You know, do you have such experiences? Well, at first I was a bit double-minded, but like I've come, I, I, I tried to study other artists both, you know, local and internationally. Mm. Um, Beyonce, for example, has been in one record label for a very long time. I've come to realize that you have to find a way to balance it up because if you keep jumping from one record label to another or you, you leave your record label and start your own record label too yeah. early, you may not be able to sustain yourself. So I'm like, I'm going to stay here for as long as I am. You, I, I, I don't think I want to keep jumping because if I keep jumping, I have to start from the scratch if I'm not ready. So until I am ready, I'm going to be in this record label, no matter how hard or how emotional it gets. And that's a brilliant mindset to have. Now, I want to switch it over and talk about your style for a second, which, first of all, I love. I saw something on Twitter yesterday. A couple okay. people came out to tweet saying that I'm so tired of hearing this Alte word being used to describe anyone that can just dress well. You don't even know the genre of music the person sings, etc. But just yeah. because of the way they dress, you'll say, oh, yeah, that one is Alte gang. What's your take on that? Um... I don't know. I think I dress the way I feel. Um, I'm like a tomboy chic um, type of person. Sometimes I don't like to look too girly, except I feel like I'm confident enough to. <laughs> you know, then you feel like you've lost some weight on your yeah. thighs and you're like, okay, I can go with a skater skirt today and put on some heels yeah. and maybe wear a jacket or something. So really, I just, I just go with the flow. I don't think people are defined by what they wear or what they put on. I think it's also not their personality as well. We are in showbiz. That's what it's called, showbiz. There so, you like, know. you dress because you want people to actually admire or because you actually feel like this is good enough for me. So it doesn't really have... You mentioned now that sometimes you wear a skater skirt because you feel like you've lost some weight on the thighs. Yeah, when How I does feel the good. pressure, you know, to look a certain way in the industry, how does it affect you and how do you deal with it? Um... Well, recently, I've been trying to love myself a bit more because, if, of course, all of you know me <laughs> before now, I used to be so skinny. And to myself, I felt like skinny was really, really sexy. I still feel like it because there's some clothes I want to put on. I'm like, OK, my arms are a bit bigger this month. My thighs are a bit bigger this month. I have big legs, by the way. So sometimes I don't just feel comfortable enough to wear some things, except maybe I have some fishnets or pantyhose to you know cover, cover up some things. But recently, I've come to understand that really, whether or not you wear anything that you think is sexy, people will talk. So it's about how you are able to confidently rock this <laughs> outfit, you know, and how you that feel matters, about yourself. how you feel about yourself. And I'm yourself. not even trying to patronize you. I think you're actually a very beautiful woman. Thank you. You're not allowed society to put you under any pressure <laughs> to look a certain way. Look that way because you want to look that way, not because they think that that is the standard. Who defines what beauty or perfection is? Yeah. It's how you feel about yourself. So you are a stunning woman. Do Thank not let you. society tell you otherwise. Thanks. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.